One, two, three. This is Dr. Alex Avila, and this is Love University, and we're back. I'm an author, psychologist, and speaker. Every week we talk about how to love yourself, others, and higher nature, and we're here live at the L.A. Festival of Books in the USC. We have a lot of amazing people around us, guests, and, and fans and readers, and we talk about empowering people, how to become the best you can be, and I'm very pleased to have a wonderful guest today, uh, the gentleman named Old Man Saxon. I guess they call you Saxon. Uh, he's a rapper who talks about the perils of, of homelessness, uh, he was actually homeless through 2014. He lived in his 2001 Explorer. He showered at gyms, ate at McDonald's, Happy Meals twice a day. And he said he even hid the reality from his family. Now he's an inspirational speaker as well. We're very pleased to have you, Mr. Saxon. Thank you. Nice to see you on board. Good to be here. Now, I'm very curious about this. How did you hide your homelessness? You said you were homeless and nobody knew. Yeah, um, it's actually really funny <laughs> because <laughs> it's funny and it's not as hard as you would think. I had a lot of people asking me, you know, where, where do you live? And it was really as simple as just saying that I lived in the other side of town that they uh, okay. <laughs> they didn't live in <laughs> or somewhere they were pretty unfamiliar with. For My mom is in Denver, Colorado. All my family's in Denver, Colorado. So while I was out here, it was as simple as just saying, you know, I'm staying in Silver Lake or I'm staying with a friend. Mm. And they didn't really have a big a deep knowledge of the geography of L.A. Mm. But usually when you hold something in, a lot it definitely weighs on you. So... It was good to, you know, get it out when I did get it out, though. It's interesting. You know, I, have a, I actually have a friend. I used to work with a Latino guy who was very sharp, educated, but he fell on hard times. I didn't know this, but he was actually sleeping in his car. Right. We were doing seminars together. Mm -hmm. And then finally, he admitted, you know, I say, where do you stay at? He said, I stay at a hotel. It's called Hotel Toyota. So <laughs> <laughs> he had all this stuff in the, the trunk. <laughs> So I'm thinking that, I mean, this guy was educated, right? So I'm thinking yeah. this is something that can happen to a lot of people. Yeah, and I think know. that's the other reason why it's pretty easy to hide it from people is when most people do have, they have this perception of what a homeless person looks like, yes. especially in L.A. It's pretty obvious when you yes. see, see people on the street. Right. But it kind of hides... That, 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 that's a smoke screen. That's when yes. you're at your absolute lowest uh, and you've been through a lot and you don't have a car, you don't have family, you don't have a job. Exactly. But there are people who are college educated, yes. work a full-time job, and mm -hmm. still don't have enough to buy a home or Yeah, rent. I mean, I see, I see here you have a three-piece suit on. You look very well-spoken. <laughs> Thank you, know, you. Very thoughtful. Thank you. So uh, no one would ever tell that you're homeless, right? You Not at like all. You're very professional you know, mm -hmm. in your style. But you also said that you're very lonely at times. And loneliness is something that we talk about at Love University. We're trying to help eradicate that. That's one of our missions. So tell us about that. Why are you so lonely as a homeless person? So, like, yeah, I would say that loneliness coupled with hiding it and just having holding something in that is a heavy mixture because you mm. want to say something to someone and but you mm. can't or you you could but mm. you're a little you're embarrassed by it well how about dating i mean how do you approach ladies if you're homeless that's funny yeah. um, I mean, where do you go on dates i guess yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's funny actually about that is this one time when i was working at juicy burger and i was homeless mm. i met this girl she came in uh the juicy burger and we talked and she was very beautiful, very mm. nicely dressed, but we were talking and somehow the conversation came up where I told her I was homeless and oh. she was like, me too. Wow, <laughs> sure. Yeah, and she was... Well, there you go. So yeah. you, can, you can have a homeless, homeless <laughs> time, right? <laughs> yeah, we went to Griffith Park and we chilled. Oh, very and, cool. Okay. Yeah, so... It, <laughs> interesting, interesting. Yeah. Because I think, I mean, I'm sure it can has, uh, hurt your self-esteem as well, right? At some oh, point. Yes. You know, if you have nothing to go to, you know, at, yeah. at, at night time. You know. Yeah, it's... um. I was very lonely, like you said, but there was one thing that I heard from a radio show randomly where they said, if you're not happy being alone, then you're in the wrong company. Uh -huh. And I thought about that. I said, yeah, actually, like, I'm lonely and I'm sad because of my thoughts. Mm. And if I can kind of flip that, yes. and now that I'm out of the situation and I right. have a home, yes. I realized too that it was a really refreshing mm. time to oh. kind of be yes. with my thoughts yes. and be able to navigate that space in a way that's not just sad, you know? Interesting. I mean, that leads me to a question like, are there any some advantages or benefits to being homeless? Oh, much? yes. There's a lot. I, you, you don't pay bills, right? For <laughs> yeah, there's no rent. Right. There was no car note even because I had right. an old car. Right. And honestly, I grew up in a family where it was there was always someone around right. there's always people in my house when i was really young i always had this dream to just live by myself yes and i finally got it and i but i was just in my car right, but right, it right. was a very 
liberating experience to just mm. do the things that I wanted to do. I didn't have right. to ask anyone's permission. Mm-hmm. If I wanted to go to McDonald's, I went to McDonald's. Right. If I wanted right. to go see a movie, mm-hmm. I saw so I many movies by like, myself. Uh, they may be a little bit uh, against the correct view of society. Mm-hmm. People think homelessness is bad. Yeah. So when you say that, how do people react? That I'm homeless? No, no, that there were some good things oh, about the, yeah. oh, it. Oh, really? I'm crazy. You're People crazy. think that I'm really <laughs> crazy. I've had okay. one person, right. I was doing a random interview, and I think they wanted me to be like a little sad about it. Yes. And they were really taken aback by the fact mm-hmm. that I was fine with it. I yes. was absolutely fine with it. Mm-hmm. And they, once again, it goes back to the... the mm-hmm. The stigma that we put around homelessness. Right, right. Also, it could be the level. I mean, if you were without a car, the street it might be a little tougher. A whole yeah. different so, so story. Those are different levels, right? Probably. Whole different. Well, yeah, that yeah. would have been. And, and uh, maybe addicted to something, right? You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that can get tough, right? Yeah, okay. and and I think a lot of people don't know in, in LA, a lot of the mental hospitals closed, and there's a lot of people yes. out there that can't. They just can't do anything. They can't make it in the, the work world, right? Yeah, yeah. it would be really, right. really hard for Right, because thinking, like, why do people go homeless? I mean, you can think of the idea of the mentally ill, maybe they lost their job. You can even professionals sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe they've been abused, right? Mm-hmm. And they're, psychologically, they start suffering, right? And they can't get it back together. Yes. Uh, what else do you think? Are the reasons why? Well, yeah, I, I've had... After I released my song, I had a woman who said she was five months pregnant living in the back of her car. And there's no, and just that sentence alone started getting my wheels turning. Like, Mm. how did that happen? Mm. She might have been in an abusive relationship. She might have not had any place else to go. Maya Angelou said for all women to make sure you have enough money to have a place, to have Mm. your own place. Because who knows what could have happened. She might have been in an abusive relationship. He right. had all the money. Right. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of different reasons why why people could be homeless. Now, do you remember why you became homeless? Oh, yeah. In a sense, it was a bit of a choice. Mm-hmm. I had friends that would let me stay on their couch. I had uh, If I ever called my mom, she would have said, hey, you know what? You were coming back to Denver. Mm-hmm. But for me, I quit my job uh, a year before. And the person I was living with was just a little too needy. It was a friend of mine, just a little too needy. And I needed to be by myself for a little bit. And I know with that being said, that's a that's a privilege to be able to choose. To right. be, some people cannot. They don't have anyone to sure. call. So, yeah, for me, it was mm-hmm. a choice to kind of... you didn't have money? Uh, oh, no, I didn't have any money. So, basically, no money is the number one thing, right? Yeah, like, no so, money. So you can't afford a, a place, right? That's the easy answer. Yeah, okay. no money. <laughs> no money, and then I guess you chose, I guess, to be independent, you're saying? Yes, be independent, and in a way... I, I, I like to look at, it, look at it as creating, manufacturing my own rite of passage, okay. like kind of having something uh-huh. for, because in, in the black community too, there's not a lot of rites of passage. Uh-huh. As a Jewish boy, you have a, yes. a ceremony where it's right. like, yeah, you're a man. Exactly. Even quinceañeras for, yeah, yeah. for Latina. Or tri- tribal, you know, they take yeah. the kid out to the wilderness. Yeah, right? you know, we're going to hunt something. Yeah, and for, for black men, that doesn't happen a lot. So, and I didn't, and, and I don't want to, I want to be, completely honest that wasn't something i was thinking of when i went into it but while i was doing it i was like yeah i need to do this i need to Mm -hmm. prove to myself that i'm a man so kind of philosophical approach you're thinking of something uh, different absolutely Uh, how long were you in the state you think the so-called state of uh wandering uh 13 months okay almost over a year yeah over a year Uh um I enjoyed half of it. The first half okay. I didn't enjoy. <laughs> the second <laughs> half I did. I guess it could be dangerous. I mean, cops pull you over. And yeah. I mean, did it happen to you at all? Or? So, no. <laughs> no cops pulled me over. The first week that I was living in my car, I was sleeping in the Hollywood Hills, mm-hmm. which isn't like, a good idea because mm-hmm. you stick out like a sore there's thumb. There's a lot of security up there, right? Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of security. I yeah. got my window knocked on very oh, early in the really? morning, no. like, hey, right. get out of here. <laughs> okay. Um, couple of random stories is one time I was sleeping in the back of my car in Koreatown mm. and well, there's good food out there if you can get it right? <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> that's funny and I was sleeping in the back and I hear my door close and I wake up and mm. I'm like oh what was that and I look out the back window and there's a car sitting there mm. and it speeds and drives away and I was just too tired to deal with it so I just went back to sleep mm. And I go back to sleep, and then I wake up to something not like hitting my door. Boom! Mm. And it's the same car. Mm. And then I'm like, oh, okay. And they drive away. So mm. I get in my, I get in the front seat. I drive to another part of town, but I start patting my pockets and realize, oh, I don't have my wallet. Oh. I look all in my oh. car, and my wallet's gone. That's not good. And so I drive back to that spot, and I remember they threw something at my car, and they threw my wallet back on the ground. Oh. Thankfully, because my <laughs> assumption is they came in, they saw I was homeless, took they cash. took my clothes, took oh. or took 
took my cash wow. and came back and gave me my ID. Okay. So yeah, it's very dangerous. Very, yeah. very dangerous. Well, raped and killed and you know, I mean, yeah. there's a lot of danger out there. You know. It must be so much like threatening as a woman yeah, to be yeah. homeless. Woman, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and also, I mean, you can get caught up in, I guess, addictions, you know, drug addiction possibly, right? Yes, Because yeah, yes. I'm sure it's easy to find in the street, right? Oh, my God. And, and yes. then, you know, you get into that spiral going down. Yeah, that's something that I never... Never tried that. Yeah, never sure. got into. Addiction runs pretty deep in my family. Mm -hmm. So I was... I was conscious enough to know to not start that, especially right. when started when I'm homeless. Yeah, <laughs> that would spiral. That would have been yeah. That it was circling the drain is what I they see. call it. You look like a fairly young man. Are you 25 or so? Or I'm 30. Okay. Thank you for that five year difference. It's amazing. <laughs> well, so Saxon, what did you learn? I mean, are there any realizations? You know, you've heard of some of these stories like um, Don Juan that went to Mexico and learned um, from the Indian, you know, the mystical things, mm -hmm. and peyote. You know, a lot of these people talk about adventures they've been on. Mm -hmm. uh, when they go to these remote, la remote lands. Uh, what did you learn from your, your journey through this, uh, you can call it roaming life? Yeah, um, like I said before, I learned to love being with myself in a very deep way with my thoughts. Mm -hmm. I learned that I am stronger than I thought I was. Um, to be mm -hmm. any, at any point in my having a house, if I kind of tried to think about being homeless, it would be, it would seem impossible to me. But once I was in it, I realized I'm a very, I'm a much stronger individual than I thought I was. Right. Are you a pretty internal energy person? Like, uh, you with your own thoughts a lot? Yes. Like, you like to read and stuff like that? And yes. Not a, I mean, I don't not a lot of friends too much, right? Yeah, no, that's so funny. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm an introvert. Yeah. Yeah. Such an introvert. So, so we read these books, you know, that's all we do. Yes. Like, we like to read a lot. I'm very much an introvert. Which is not rare for a rapper. I mean, we think of rappers as being extroverted, like, with the ladies and, so, you know, that's and, and partying, right? I mean, my theory behind that is all... Not all, that's hyperbole. A lot of artists are introverts. Uh -huh. but, but they play the role. Yes, they uh -huh. play the role and they play it very well. Uh -huh. As you would as an artist. You right, know, exactly. you have to be able to take those outside feelings and put them right. elsewhere. So exactly. if you are a painter, you have to be able to put it out there. You might be introverted, but once you get uh -huh. out, you can still... Right. Fake it, at least. Exactly. But you bring kind of a philosophical view to, to rap, I think, in some ways. Yes. You're, you're tackling some issues. Yes, it's absolutely. Very, very interesting. So that's interesting. You know, the introverted rapper that talks about higher issues. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, interesting. And, and you're kind of working on that. You told me with black uh, young men, too. Right? You want to give a new image. Yeah. As a black young kid growing up, I was limited to, the, to what I was being... I didn't see a lot of me on screen. I wasn't represented in the right way all the time. Hmm. I was represented in a couple of ways as a thug, as a criminal. Boys in the hood. Uh, the boys like in the hood, yes, yeah, yes. That's the kind of movie. Um, and I see it a lot now of black kids getting more weird, of hmm. getting more hmm. in touch with themselves. Hmm. The talk I just did was uh -huh. about how authenticity isn't necessarily a great thing. Did you say they get more weird? Is you get more weird, yeah. Like, weird is what, like, uh, get like, more like nerdy or something? In tune, yeah, you nerdy, oh, okay. you get more in tune with yourself because right. when you do see the image of hip hop, hip hopper, I'll call them, right, right. it's very basic. It's uh -huh. gold chains, it's uh -huh. the, it's a flashy, right. but it's not it's not a fantasy. I want mm. I want to see black kids just getting more in touch with their fantasy side, mm. with their their really weird side mm. because authenticity mm. is does not always breed the best art first off mm -hmm. and authenticity mm -hmm in a way it can be boring sometimes. Mm -hmm. I have two kids right now. You do? And wow. yeah, two, I have a two year old and an oh. 11 month old. You look so baby faced though. Okay. <laughs> <Sorry>, young. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. And my authentic life right now huh. is really boring. It's okay. really, really boring. Right. So, so raising the kids. Yeah. yeah, so having that, having to put that in my art wouldn't necessarily be mm -hmm. Lead to great art, but mm -hmm. having this character of Old Man Saxon who mm -hmm. lives in this fantasy world mm -hmm. and is jumping around and mm -hmm. creating these wonderful songs, that's a representation that I would mm -hmm. like to see more of. Mm -hmm. You know, like Dungeons and Dragons, stuff like that. Yep, or, Dungeons yeah. and Dragons too. Sci-fi. Yep, uh, absolutely. So, so a whole different mindset. Abs I remember, yeah, when I was growing up, as, as a black kid in elementary school, I got laughed at for watching Pokemon okay, and so playing Pokemon cards. Animation. But I was the age where you should be watching and playing Pokemon. Right, yeah, you weren't. Uh, you know, beating some kid yeah, up Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and I had friends that were like that, and right. they made fun of me. So for, different kinds of people. Yeah. Interesting. Well, what would you advise uh, people that are homeless? How do you get through that? Or, you know, what's your advice for those folks? I don't think there's any one answer for that. What I would say is 
if you really, really, really want it to be, it can be temporary. Okay. It can be. Mm-hmm. But that's not that's not a, a blanket answer for everyone. It, for yeah. the people who are can work their way out of it, who can get a job, mm-hmm. who do who has family somewhere, if you want to, you can get out of it by and it's a very American dream type of thing, but right. working right. your way right. out of it, if it's possible for uh-huh. you. So having a, a dream, a goal, an aspiration, right? Absolutely. And, and people do come to California for that purpose, not mm-hmm. from many parts of the world. Yeah. Some of them are actors and entertainers, right? And they mm-hmm. may have to sleep in their car for a mm-hmm. while. Yeah. yeah. But then you know, some of them do make it, right? Absolutely. To the higher point. Yeah, and then that was what, that's honestly what helped me a lot was realizing it's temporary. At mm-hmm. no point did I see my the end of my life being homeless. I never saw that. Mm-hmm. I made sure to visualize there mm-hmm. will be mm-hmm. an end to it. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you do just need to hear someone say mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. even if it is yourself. Now, Saxon, where do you go now in life? I mean, what is your driving mission now? Any projects you're excited about? You know, what, what, what are you going right now? Um, because I have two kids, it, it is right now my mission is to show them that they can s- succeed in whatever that means to them doing something that they love to do and Mm. that for me is making art my mom is the most amazing woman on earth but she had a in her head from when i was born that Mm. you're gonna go to college Mm. you know and that's and you if you want to go to college that's fine Mm. but i remember at a young age saying mom i want to be a chef i want to cook i i want to create art pretty much Uh and that was kind of like you know whatever so for me right now my driving goal is to get my kids to a point where they are comfortable expressing themselves doing the things they want to do if it's art if it's school just making sure that they're in tuned enough with themselves Mm -hmm. to know what drives them Mm. that's fantastic we seem to have you have a very thought-provoking kind of a style thank you it goes deeper than the average person yeah thank you and i think uh maybe through your struggles right you've uh, transformed that mm-hmm. and our mission here at love university is to do that you know through our loving energy to other people and also higher nature mm-hmm. uh you know i don't know if you believe in a higher nature or something beyond yourself yep i do you see that's very important now i'm very curious uh i'd like to maybe hear can you give us a little something right now a little a little free words uh, uh, to based on this again yeah? Free words based on this. Yes. We'll say, we're at I'm, the USC fair. <laughs> what do you get to dare? Or something like that. <laughs> I'm actually really bad at that. Are you bad at that? I'm really bad at oh, it. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Just give a little something from what you know. So. Okay. Um, I'm a into proper stuff like an empanada. My chick, way hotter, calling me Big Papa, been with me through the saga. When my game was cheesier than... Barada. When I was making bread, but it was only focaccia. Someone tell my mama I'm probably in Camp Granada. I know you wasn't proud of me, now I'm getting that Prada. I know I shot a lot of Akuna Matatas out, but not giving nothing is casting a large about. Not having my father around, like that ain't the real reason your boy done brought a pound. They say if he get fly, we'll probably have shot him down. Well, forget him. I, I like it. Hey, let's go, man. Hey, this guy's got some style. Huh? Thank I, I want to have you back on the show. Absolutely. I'd love to do something with you in the future. You know, some kind of presentations. You know, Absolutely. Because you have an inspirational mindset. Thank you. Uh, and where can people get a hold of you or your music and your things that you're doing? Old Man Saxon on everything. There's only one Old Man Saxon. If there's any, if you find another, <laughs> something's wrong. You're on a okay, different Old Man internet. Saxon. Is old your, Man your Saxon. Thing. You got uh, DVDs, it, tapes, and Instagram, thing. Uh, tw- Twitter. I have CDs. I have two albums out. I got another one coming April 20th. 24th uh called goldman sachs um yeah i'm um, just google me you'll find everything right. old man saxon uh, he's not old but he's got the wisdom no. of the of wise man right <laughs> thank you <laughs> so everyone's been wonderful to have you on board uh, thank you. saxon and we're gonna have you hopefully on again and dr alex Abid here at uh, love university the usc book festival is going hot we're, we're having a lot of fun if you want to reach us and ask more questions about our show today loveuniversity.love Call us at 310-226-8090. Until next time, everyone put away your notepads, your books, your iPhones, and your negative mindsets. Until next time, love university.